Hi everyone, welcome to Entrepreneur Inside uh, Straight Talk. This episode is a very special episode that we're going to have. This is going to be a very exciting uh, panel of discussion. Uh, why? Because first thing, we have a very strong panel uh, that is the champion of the industry that we are talking about, which is digital transformation. So now, uh, first and foremost, I would, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Ng, from, uh, the CEO from MDAC. Of course, not forgetting Samuel. Samuel will be the Melody Kindiland CEO, as well, as well as Adrian. Adrian, of course, he is the uh, Global Entrepreneur Exchange uh, Principal for Digital Transformation, as well as co-founder for Polymath. Welcome everyone to the show. Thank you for Hello. inviting. Thanks for inviting. Good, All right. Good to be on the show. Okay, first off, we have to address the basic, lah, okay? First question is a basic question. What actually is digital transformation? What is this all about? Okay, uh, maybe uh, Dr. Ng, you want to go first? All right, very briefly, when we use the word transformation, it seems very complicated. But if yes, you look at it, it it's still about transforming, changing your business by integrating digital technology mm -hmm. into all aspects of your business. So business comes first. So in order to digital transform your business, that means you need to know how to cleverly use digital technology in your business. For instance, changing how you operate. All right. But your customer is your customer. Good thing is that with digital technology, you will be able to reach out to new set of customer. Mm -hmm. But always remember, it's your business that you are improving by integrating digital technology yeah. so for instance you may have to modify enhance your business process because mm -hmm. digital has is a, a certain way of reaching out and engaging with your customer with your supplier yeah. uh, customer experience will change so no longer face to face people may be using uh, the the automated tools to do certain things but always remember you is enhanced it's not about not doing your, your business. It's always yes. a business comfort. Your wow. organization culture is also part of the digital transformation because you are going to operate very differently. So mindset change is very, very important. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's not just purely enhancing traditional method, but reimagine, reimagining them for a digital age wow. to wow. meet the changing market expectations. It's actually not difficult so if you yeah. know what business you are in so then you start looking at how do i ease myself into this new environment mm -hmm. then it becomes very simple but if you don't have a business then we cannot talk about business transformation digital transformation right. wow okay wow this is a keyword reimagining entrepreneurship through digital transformation samuel what, what what's your take on that i think my view like uh, it's quite similar to uh, dr Ong's. Okay, it's about integrating all these technologies to um, our business functions, you know, the value chain of the business um, so that we can serve our customers better, creating more value and enhance productivity, experience maybe, and efficiency and lowering down the cost as you scale. Because mm -hmm. for myself, um, when I started, uh, when I went into, um, when I went to my dad's business, uh, running in the kindergarten, people was like, can you actually use digital technology to enhance yeah. your process? True. Yeah, but uh, for us, I think, um, I think the first thing is about marketing. We can actually use, uh, we can usually use, easily use digital tools to help us to do marketing better. Mm -hmm. And then maybe like for the HR processes, you know, like um, you need several HR executives, you know, um, bringing the, the, the offer letter around and everything, but everything you can now can be done using an app. Mm -hmm. So all these things, they will cut down all the, you know, um, we call it redundancy as well as um, actually um, improve the productivity of the company and focusing on what matters, I think is very important. Yeah. Adrian, mm -hmm. I think these questions uh, doesn't come, uh, must, must have come in handy for you because uh, throughout your career, you have been very much involved in transform, yeah. digitally transform the enterprise. Maybe you can share with us what, what, what is the core idea of digital transformation? I think, um, well, agreeing with uh, what uh, Dr. Ng and uh, Samuel have said, uh, those are very key words. I think reimagine is one probable team that we will definitely want to take across. No matter what business you are, you definitely need to be imaginative, right? True. Um, I think in terms of delivery, we've looked at it uh, from more of uh, uh, implementation perspective. It's uh, three key things. Mm -hmm. uh, one is uh, people, uh, process, and platform. 
Mm. I think just breaking this down will become you become slightly easier. Mm. Um, I think usually it starts with the people. So this is where the imagine comes in. True. So the people leading the organization and the people within the organization firstly have to reimagine uh, how how they're going to do their business. Mm -hmm. So people will be very key in the in, in the entire part of the business because these are sort of people that they will serve. So mm -hmm. customers, their yeah, stakeholders, and also people is first. Then you break it down to once you know what the people needs to do, how they're going to do it, and all. Then you work out the process uh, because process will determine what kind of platforms you use. So technology. To some degree, I mean, we've done a lot of implementation for a lot of SMEs. The, 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 the platforms are usually the easiest part uh, because it's just implementation, right? The hardest part in terms of strategy will be the people first, then process. Uh, because this is where you need to reimagine. So I'm taking the keyword from Dr. Ng, is really reimagine how you want to serve the people, how do you want to serve your internal culture, and then also how do you want to do uh, process your, your, your external, which means your customers. Mm -hmm. So by breaking it down to these three key areas to look at, just focusing a lot on the people first before your process, mm -hmm. then develop your process, then develop and then connect with the platforms. Platform. These three probable steps will be very easy to probably implement. I mean, it mm -hmm. sounds easy, but this is how you break down into the digital transformation perspective. All right. Okay. With these uh, three main segments, uh, people, process and platform. The next question I want to ask the panel is, the need has never been more urgent, especially now with this MCO, you can't open up your shop uh, storefront and whatnot. Uh, how can SME adopt it now? As, as you all, all three of you are aware of, MDEC has always been championing the use of digital to enhance productivity. Mm -hmm. So we look at this as the, the, the right time. If let's say in the past, SME are still thinking of, Wait, I can still wait. Now you realize that you really cannot wait. Yeah. I was sharing with another group the other day. Mm -hmm. Those who have been digitalized and they're prepared, you can see that I, not only they can continue to operate, they can actually take this, using this time to enhance and improve their, their sales. But those who did not have any digital tools, some of them have to stop operation totally. Mm -hmm. So I would like to call on SME to start. How, they can, they, how can they adopt? It's very simple. Go back to what is your business about and then start. Like what we are doing today, remote working and communication is actually quite important. How do you use digital tools to reach out to your employee, to reach out to your supplier, to reach out to your customer? So mm -hmm. you start to have some online presence or even like using a tool like Microsoft Teams or, or Skype Business, or even WhatsApp, if, you, if you're thinking about or WeChat or if you're more familiar with WeChat, you can use all these tools to start communication because you can create a group to do that. Mm -hmm. So I would say that first thing, first remote working communication, the easiest to do, anyone can do, do that. And after that, you start looking at things like uh, um, how can you use the... Uh, because I go to more practical, it's not just yes. theory anymore. So you have yeah. something to sell, go on, onboard yourself onto an e-commerce Either platform or you have your, uh, again, it's about digital presence. Do your social commerce. Use the platform to go out. So then digital marketing comes in. Mm -hmm. But to digitalize uh, or digitize your business this way is actually very simple. If I have some product to, to, to sell, the mm -hmm. first step is I create an online presence. Next, I upload the, the information about my product. Then I can start taking order. Mm -hmm. Of course, you also have to deal with things like the delivery and payment. But the good mm -hmm. thing is that tools are already available. And the, there are many players out there, solution providers out there. You can work with. They are like about in tens of the numbers of digital uh, uh, platform that allows you to make use of the logistic support for delivery. Mm -hmm. And also for payment gateway, you can talk to anyone. So, mm -hmm. so I, would, I, would, I would suggest that people start going on, on that. When, when we have all the, 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 the basic steps already in place, then you can start looking at how do I use it to enhance my productivity in a more uh, uh, holistic manner. But first thing first is that make yourself, uh, get your, give yourself an online presence. I would yes. suggest you do that. And if you have more time, please log in and, and go to all those channels to learn some new skill set. It's very simple. Sometimes you just go in for half an hour, two yeah. hour, one hour, learn what is Big data, yes. learn uh, what, how to make use of this tool. It's actually not that difficult. People are scared because they thought it's difficult. 
it is not difficult. When we are forced to use, we'll use. Yesterday, it, we, I have a session with another group uh-huh. and the, the one gentleman was telling us, you know, never know how to use Steam. I learned from the daughter, but he, he started to like it. Another person said that I'm going to change the way how I consume moving forward because I have learned how to, the benefit of going online. So your customer will change after this as well. So it's the best time for SME to start, do something. Yeah. And I think have an online presence, do the remote learning and try the e-commerce as a way to sell. Yeah, okay. The best time for those that are, have not embarked on it now uh, is now. La. Adrian, uh, yeah, how can SME adopt it? And uh, the other thing is, uh, does it require a lot of money? Uh? Um, I think this one is, uh, interestingly, uh, this is uh, quite asked by a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah. And I think just going to add on a bit to what uh, Dr. Ng has shared is that she's actually explained a bit about the platforms, about the things that they're able to find. Um, I think one, I would say probably to a non-digital SME, um, the first thing you can probably do is to look at uh, Pinpoint. Yes. So which means what is your organization's pain point at the moment? Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, I cannot meet. So the first pain point is I cannot meet. But you know then what do you do next? So like what Dato has said, there's many platforms out there to find a way. So can we use WhatsApp? And then I use WhatsApp and it can do 4%. So this is not a best tool. So let's look for another tool. So in that sense, if you start with a pain point, you eventually find some kind of a solution. So platform. So then what about your process? So I would say that um, actually now is... I would say the best time to start is because this is a real test, which means now you're talking about survival and everything, yeah. training and all this. Now yes. you're really in jungle, right? You're in a wall. Correct. So this is where you really know whether your equipment is enough. You mm-hmm. take assess of your, means stop your assess of where you are. You assess yourself. Then you look at the pain points, what they are. Prioritize the pain points. So which is most important now? Your customers, your, in, your internal team or things like that. And then after with identifying a pain point, you figure out probably the process or platform you can use. So this will be an iterative uh, way, which means you will continue to become better. So I start WhatsApp for people. I want to do more. I'm going to add more people. So eventually, you will become an expert at that part. And then you keep growing. So by solving all the pain points in your organization, using the digital technology, eventually you'll be pretty much quite digitalized uh, mm-hmm. without needing to worry about going to a, work with a consultant or any of those things because a lot of this now available online you can read. Like Datong was saying, you can go and learn. There's many things you can actually figure out. So once, I would say, the core, core thing is identify your pain points today and then work towards it. Prioritize the pain point and then match a platform or a service or a solution to the pain point. So the other thing would be, of course, costing and of course, entrepreneur, uh, they, 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 they want to see the result yesterday. So what kind of a result or, you know, that, that we can see as an entrepreneur if we have invested in this X amount of money? I think, okay, so this is also a very uh, ch- challenging question because we do, when we do transformation for clients, they will obviously ask, okay, Adrian, so what's the KPI? How, how, would I, um, how would I get my investment back? So we look at a few things because it is not an immediate, no, usually you don't see things immediately, um, but it is progressively. But when you prioritize the pain point, you probably see, I will call it a lowest hanging fruit. Um, we kind of break it down into four areas. So you've got a high impact, low effort. Uh, you have those that's uh, low effort, low impact. You have got high impact, uh, low effort. So I would want to look at the low effort, high impact first. Solve this problem first because this is where it's high impact to my business, but low effort. So for example, um, e-commerce, like uh, that's what I'm saying, is probably a high, uh, probably a mid effort with a high impact to my organization because I can immediately sell. For example, like the, like the, like the farmers in Cameron Islands, their pain point was they couldn't get their goods to the market, the marketplace. So Lazada was basically that quick solution, which is low effort, but high impact to the, to the business. So by finding out uh, whether it's partners or solutions and all that, you can probably do that. So um, also because we work with many different startups, I think bootstrap is one of the keywords that's used. So mm-hmm. you would obviously try to find what is the best available tools out there. There are some free, you test it. It works, pay a little bit, continue to grow. So mm-hmm. this is where when the returns come back, you can then plow back into investing more into the digital platform. But um, most people feel it's very expensive. 
actually the key part is that if there is a lot of SaaS and in fact uh, with MDEX effort, there is a lot of Malaysian um, platforms out there that's giving uh, very good, um, whether it's discounts or whether it's good solution support to the Malaysian um, SMEs now. So it's a good time to take advantage. That's why I said now is the best time. So the investment may not be as high as in the usual time, but probably now will be a high impact to the organization. So I would say don't worry about cost because mm -hmm. in some sense you need to bring the income back. But if you do not invest in some of this, you'll probably see your, your, your income eventually um, decline. So you want to basically pop it back up. So that is basically, I said, not too expensive, focus on the small parts and then make, and then slowly incrementally in, improve. Mm -hmm. If I can also add a bit on sure. this uh, costing ahead, part as well. Yes. So thank you, Adrian, for highlighting some of the things that we are doing. You, you probably heard of this term called e usaha one and yeah. it's an initiative that MDEC has been driving for a number of years. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide training for free, and, and, then, and then in three days, I can tell you that this is a practical thing. So in three days, they learn. For someone who has totally no, uh, no knowledge, if you have a phone, handphone, okay. right. today's smartphone is cheap, right? Yes. So I have something to sell in my own kampong. So what happened is that these three days, they will learn how to create an account with Facebook. Or, or, or something. I mean, one of these social media tools. Mm -hmm. As, and this can be free, eh, by the way. Yes. So they learn how to capture, uh -huh. the, take a picture of their goods, uh -huh. and how to write a description, and how to take order. Of course, we, we used to do uh, over a weekend or three days for, for training. But today, many of this module is already on our platform called Go e commerce. Go Remember, e -commerce. go e commerce. Uh -huh. Go in, there are tons of uh, material you can learn. And you don't even have to go look for it, just go to that. That platform register you can that then you can learn and if you let's say i need some help to link me up if let's say instead of creating my own uh, account i want to be linked up let's say we just want to talk about lazada or, or any other platform we mm -hmm. can also play the role so so this is very simple no cost to you because using your existing equipment and obviously if you want to do more like you want to use some google uh, data to for you to do more analytics that's later right not yeah. to say you have to do it immediately. Important thing is that start doing something. And that's just the part of it. You know that for many of those uh, uh, users of USAWA, later they start using our accounting tools and all. For them to start using the digital platform to do how to do accounting, how to do supply chain management. Mm -hmm. and, and this thing will come in because, again, addressing your, your needs, the pain point of your needs. When, when there is a need, you will start doing it. But we also are, real, are very aware that you cannot ask them to do like, oh, digital transformation in a big way. And we are not asking for that. Start something. And, and there are so many things. And it's free. It's free. You don't even have to pay. Okay. So it's free. Then we go to this uh, MDAC website, is it? It's called, uh, yeah, you can go to MDAC website to look for it. But I'm mm. also saying that it's, uh, there's a microsite called Go e-commerce. You can okay. do that. And then just one of the things we do. I've yeah. got a question for Dato Ong. Yes. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Am I allowed to ask questions? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm just wondering because currently I'm trying to implement NetSuite. Have you heard of NetSuite? Um, it's an ERP system. Uh, I think for the implementation cost, I think it's about 100 over 1,000. And I think it's about 10,000 to 15,000 per month for our company. Okay. Do you think uh, Medec will actually support this kind of initiative? And they cannot be providing grant to individual companies this way. But you probably heard of this SME digitalization grant that was uh, announced as uh, the uh, 2020 budget. And uh, the initiative uh, is championed by Bank Simpana National with MDEC as a partner on the technology side, meaning we we'll help them to identify solution providers to okay. disperse uh, party at banks, Banana National and SME Bank. But it, it doesn't give you the kind of money you talk about. Like it's actually to help people to start using technology. So it's uh, 5,000 per company. So that okay. is to, to encourage people. But for, for, for someone like you who is already very well versed, uh, there are some other things that are being worked on. Uh, but that one you have to really show us uh, the improvement is, is the, like a full-blown digital transformation. There's okay. still a way to, to get it. But if you want to take a loan, there's many. Uh, bank uh, oh, yeah. also have loan, but that one actually their loan is, amount is higher than this uh, 100,000. Okay. They, their loan is in the millions. So okay. you have to look at, again, go back to Adrian, it's the needs and then we look at what 
meets your requirement because uh, open uh, ended question about is there support yes there's many support but you have to find those that meets your needs is it a grant is it a loan even loan is subsidized loan so you have oh, to okay. consider all this different type of uh, uh, vehicles or, or facilities that you can use but okay. what I want to encourage is more people out there start something there's a lot there are a lot of free tools that you can start using already and then once you get the hang of it and you start spending some of your own money because you see the benefit. It's, look at it as investment. Huh? Never look at it as a cost because digital yes. transformation is an investment. It's not a cost item. Because people still have this, oh, I, I, I pay additional money. No, it's not. You're investing in your business. So just like you invest salary, you pay salary, people's salaries to do work. You invest in technology so that you can do better business. If you look at it that way, it's not a waste. It's an investment for something big, bigger. Yeah, so Sorry, I wanted to just add on that. Yes. Sometimes uh, when we do, when we talk about digitalization, I forgot to say just now is that um, you actually see savings um, because in terms of automation, you save few things. One is time because then you can focus on what's important rather than the manual work. Mm -hmm. um, you actually save whether resources because now my, my resources can be focused elsewhere because some things are already True. set for a system or platform to do. So, I think is other than really this investment that I think what Dr. said as well, is that you actually will see savings in a short term or maybe slightly mid term. So this is where they will see the returns, not directly in cash, not directly in your revenue, mm -hmm. but you actually see probably in your profit, uh, in your margin because your cost probably has gone down or sure. your focus is better, right? So this is something that, that digitalization is very, very, very key. Efficiency and productivity also will go, go up uh, by, uh, accordingly. Uh, yeah, Samuel, I just, want, I just want you to share with us your journey. I think you started this uh, trans digital transformation a uh, good two years back, is it? Four years, four years ago, yeah. Uh, four years ago. Okay, maybe you can uh, let's share with us what prompted you to jump into this bandwagon. What, what did you see okay. back then? Uh, and also, what have you changed uh, overall uh, your business operation after the adoption? Oh, okay, um why I started this journey because um, I, I've got a really impo important mindset in mind uh, it's just if I were to scale I really need to automate I cannot rely on people especially my business I think we rely rely, rely on people like uh, when it comes to teaching we need, we need uh, we need teachers to teach but when it comes to supporting um, functions business functions I think that we can really automate on that so that we can focus more on our education instead of focusing on the HR focusing on the marketing focusing on the finance so uh, I, I believe that like these digital tools will actually help me to enhance the experience that humans cannot provide and for example like you redu reduce mistakes and mm -hmm. you even can get leads when you're sleeping yeah these kind of things that humans cannot provide like because um, for our business, we, we, we build a new content and then we start recruiting using one video, a professional video, of course, and then we use social media to, to actually um, get leads. Maybe one video, we can get about 700 leads. So for example, when we open a new outlet, it's impossible for us to attend 700 people. But through digital marketing, we can actually have 700 uh, we got potential prospects. And these people, they can convert into sales. So for now, we actually expanded. You know, previously, we just have a just normal uh, digital marketing. We get leads and then we call them one by one. For now, we have expanded to CRM. So how can we actually manage the 700 leads in two days or three days? So we start to apply like lead scoring, like those that interacted with our website, those that interacted with our uh, maybe social media platform, they'll get extra points so that the leads will go up and we call the people that are relevant to us. And I think this, I think this cannot be done by human. And of course, I think long-term wise, I think why I started this journey because it's about reducing the cost. I know that, um, for example, finance, when I know that implementing NetSuite is very expensive, but long-term wise, if I were to expand to 50 outlets or maybe 80 outlets, I can reduce my, my hate counts. And uh, this is proven, you know, when, when the salesman approaches, they actually show us data. How can you actually reduce your hate counts? And of course, I think um, I'm a process person. I believe in process, and I believe that if you want to be, if you want to have a competitive advantage, you need to be really good in all your processes. So I think that uh, my mindset is building competitive advantage through digital uh, digital technologies. I understand. Yeah. Okay, Adrian, uh, share with us your experience in digital transformation and why and uh, why and when you started on this journey, and of course also share with us a little bit of some of the challenges that you face along the way. 
Um, I think some, maybe I'll just share one part of it because in some of my engagement, I think with uh, even with MDEC, I did share that uh, why would a digital agency do transformation because you're already digital already. Yes. Um, but actually, um, this was a few years back. So I think um, I'm just going to go with two aspects. Um, one is on uh, even on resources. So Mm -hmm. um, what we were getting at some point of time is that there were a lot of people saying that, hey, uh, Adrian, we need to hire more people because uh, we don't have, um, there's a lot of work. There's just not enough people to yeah. do the work. Uh, we had at some point a um, um, hundred, a hundred odd people. Why it sounds so familiar to me also? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking, so, so many people, why do we need more, more people to work? So, right, so right. then what we did is we started data rising um, everything. So which means we started um, looking at what person does on a day-to-day -day basis, we track everything. And then we track, we track it now, we started using data to also track our um, cl clients, right? So interesting is that we had a lot of clients, but then we didn't know which clients was highly profitable or some were really high effort, low margin, and some was um, low, uh, low effort, high margin. And so we kind of did the whole thing and we figured out, wow, there's a big chunk of really low, low margin, high effort um, work. So what we decided to do was basically take the, this is where the pain point is, right? So we mm -hmm. took the, we both bite the bullet and said, let's take this out. Um, and let's not do this part of work because it is, number one is cost. Number two, we're not making margin. Number three, we are taking away the productivity. Plus, mm -hmm. I'm going to add more people. So in this case, now we give them more um, space. <laughs> so by, by doing that, you immediately start to see um, our margins go up. Um, because in service-based business, it is a, uh, very hard to see the, the, the margins because it is true, you know, the number of people and all that. So we started to be very clear on our exact margins versus our resources. So this is where we decided, hey, actually, we don't need so many people. We only need a few key people because some people are working more, some people are working less. And then we distributed it across and then we made them work on more uh, higher, higher margin, uh, lower effort business so that we could all go home at a certain time. So this was something we managed to do, which means now we managed to go home at we come to work at 9.30, we go back at 6.30 on a Monday to Friday, uh, which is, we used to work 24 hours, seven days a week. That's one thing. Then another part is we started to say, um, this was two years back as well, okay guys, we're going to shut down one day in the, in, in the, in the business, so which means we're going to now do a uh, four-day work week because now we can do nine to six, Monday to Friday, we're now going to do only four days because by the data shows that they actually only work four days a week in the data. But in real life, they come to the office four days. So what we did is we shut the office down. Um, then, then we say, okay, don't come to work uh, on Mondays and then four days only. And interestingly, we start to see the productivity went up. Uh, we had no almost lower um, MCs. We had lower, um, you know, OT. All these things were started to become less, which basically means that operationally, my cost has gone down. And then after a while, after six months, we decided to say, okay, guys, don't have to come to work anymore in the office. You work from whenever, wherever. We already built the platform because of that of the pain point. We now realize when we are not working in the office, what were the things missing? For example, I cannot connect the server. I cannot work on this. I need to do this. So we, we kind of found those pain points and then we work around it. Six months later, we technically were 100% work from home. Um, this was like one and a half years back, right? So we start to see, like I said, number one, we save costs in no MC. Honestly, we had no claims on MC in the last one and a half years. Um, no OT. We don't have uh, simply people disappearing um, because we don't really matter where, what they do in the day. But as long as they deliver their work, um, this, of course, we are slightly more digital. So we are slightly easier. You can't do this for factories or, or F&B, right? But for our case, we could. So in this case, immediately our margin increased even more because our costs have gone down. And the happiness for the people working is so increased. They're healthier, <laughs> suddenly, right? Less MC, right? Uh, and then you have more productivity and more creative because they now can, can do in their own zones. So this is basically uh, my experience, just these two areas I, can, I wanna share because there's a lot more parts. But these are the in inherent um, rewards that we see by just investing in almost very low cost, right? Um, because data rising, giving one day off is low cost because it's something that we're already doing. But our rewards are immense. So by looking at pain points, doing a small, small incremental changes, you can actually be transformational. Um, of course, the, the tools that we started using was like things like Slack, Jira, uh, all these tools that could help us solve our pain points uh, will cost. But it, it essentially, it costs us less than keeping a big workforce. So yeah, this is just an example. This is just an example. Okay. All right. Dr. Ong, 
Uh, I just want to ask you, is it applicable for all types of businesses? Uh? For example, if I'm a char kway teow seller, if I'm a pasar malam, uh, you know, operator, uh, do I still need to embark on this digital transformation? Is it relevant to me? Uh, the, the simple answer, <coughs> sorry, the simple answer is yes. So digital transformation applies to everyone. But we must also realize that for some services like Adrian, especially professional services type, is actually more visible compared to those we call it the physical business. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a fact that we have to acknowledge. But having said that, everybody can benefit from digital one way or another. We, mm -hmm. we talk a lot about this, uh, this communication tool. Mm -hmm. It applies to everyone. Digital True. marketing can apply to, to even chat retail seller. Yeah. And, and, and then you and reaching out to the consumer who maybe in the future, the buying behavior has changed. I don't want to go queue up anymore. So yeah. use a tool for you to pace out where, how much you can sell. These are all the things that a retail seller can do. Sure. And interestingly about the professional service, I realized that, well, this should be the easiest to, to move to the digital platform, but most of the professional service sectors are not doing it. They mm. still prefer to do a very traditional work. So I like to call on people. Now, in this time where you cannot go meet your customer, selling insurance, la, give audit, <laughs> do audit uh, uh, work, la, do okay. advisory, all these things can be done online. And, and it's so straightforward and easy. You can start from there, la, because to get to Adrian's level, yeah. take about one, one year, la, right? But right. do something about it, yes. Uh -huh. It's applicable to all. Choose the, the first thing that you can do and then move on. Adrian, since you are the digital transformations, uh, this uh, consultant, let's say I'm selling Chakwe how, Diao, how, how are you going to advise me? What should I do? Okay, I, I think the first thing I would say is that, like, so I would usually, so this is looking at a few perspectives. So I'm looking at a, a, a perspective, number one, what is your value? So your biggest value in your business is your, chow, your frying of your Chakwe Diao, which I guess is very hard to duplicate or you know because you have a special kung fu right yeah so i would say that you would definitely want to look at digitalization your non-core uh, activities example marketing so if you every day had to go to the market to buy raw materials um, you would be waking up at five something in the morning go to the market find the materials and then bring it to your restaurant right so if this is the time because uh, time is valuable I would mm -hmm. probably digitalize this perspective. I would put it into, let's say, a scheduled order to order my barang-barangan from, let's say, one of the e-commerce guys. So when I go to the office, in my restaurant, when I go there, all my, all my supplies are already at my stall. So I save time and I'm now ready to focus to fry. I don't have to go to drive to the, 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 the pasar, pasar to go and buy everything. Everything is delivered for me. Mm -hmm. Second is that I don't know how many chakwe tells I sell in a day. I probably know because I write it down on a piece of paper and I just keep frying because the orders keep coming in. So the next prob probable do is probable thing is probably I want to, if I got an assistant, probably I use a mobile phone to take orders, example. So I know what orders are done. And at the end of the day, all I need to do is just consolidate and look at my data. I will know how much I collected, look at my till. Is it the same? Great. Second is that what about uh, pay, uh, online payment? Because now I have to go take this money to the, to the bank and bank it in, mm -hmm. right? So if I use e-payment, money is already in my bank. So there's something I could do with my customers. Right. Second, second, the other part is that now that I have got downtime, in between like 2, two, three, two 30 people go back from um, lunch hour, I'm still available, but nobody's ordering. So why don't I connect to Grab Food or Panda, Food Panda, one of these? So which means I can still fry and still earn money in my downtime, but I have to connect to digital. Then another last part um, probably is that what about um, I would know and looking at all this is I would say basically see trending, right? So by my orders, by my way I deliver my food, my food on Monday, Tuesday, you see, oh, actually Monday a lot more people eat chakwetel than Tuesday. So mm -hmm. probably Monday, I will increase my orders on my pasta, example. So this is where, then you, when you already have a fixed order, you would know that you're buying regularly from this supplier. You can say, hey, can you give me now because I'm your regular buyer on a day-to-day -day basis, you're delivering this to me. So which means my cost, number one, I am now very focused on just charing, frying kachakotel. And all the other parts around my business is digitalized. So actually, my, my, the, my, how I earn is actually now a lot more because I work less but earn more. 
So this is one example of actually digitalizing even just the Chakwe Health. Okay, the other <laughs> thing, Samir, I want to check with you is how do yeah. you think the business model will change after this COVID-19? Because right now, a lot of our uh, consumptive behavior has changed. Uh, for example, now most of us staying at home, so nothing much to do. Either we grab food or we uh, be, be the chef la, or learn how to be a chef at home. And uh, our, how should I say, our behavior of going to the shopping mall, I think with this COVID-19, even after the MCO, people are more cautious in going to these malls, shopping at malls. Because for us right now, is uh, you know, a lot of Facebook, you will see a lot of people selling their stuff, chi chong fan, all that. Uh, yes. You can order online. So uh, the tendency for me to physically go to the mall and buy stuff has been reduced very much. Uh, or of course, maybe for your, your, your side will be the education side. How, how, yes. how will the whole things change, do you think? Because for, for myself, I'm not a, like a management consultant, so I don't really get to see like the, the, you know, the, the overview of the, the whole economy. But for my industry, I can see there's a change. Mm-hmm. You know, like um, in Hong Kong, in Singapore, they're really used to the e-learning. I think um, they're way ahead of us. Like in Hong Kong, um, Parent, they do parenting at home. Like uh, they will push content, um, content to um, to a portal uh, for the parents to actually do it with their children at home. So I think like because of this COVID nineteen, I start to realize that parents they're slowly adapting to this kind of behavior. They have this kind of behavior that they're willing to actually sit down with their children to actually do Zoom with us with our teachers. They would actually um, sit down with the children, help the children to set up their online portal so that they can learn online. So I can see that, um, I, I realize that people, they, we are really adaptive, <laughs> especially, you know, when it comes to, um, uh, when it comes to um, um, event like this, people, they, they really adapt. So I can see that for my industry, um, it's, an, it's actually an opportunity for us because um, we can actually start selling to zero to two. I, did I mention the other day about zero to two? Yeah, mm-hmm. zero to two because we couldn't accommodate to zero to two because we actually in the kindergarten business from sure, three sure. to six. But for now, if they have this kind of new behavior, so I think um, all the industry experts or in, uh, people that are in the industry, they really have to observe their consumers, whether there's a, this kind of change. So for myself, I think if they are willing to accept um, online learning, I think it's really an opportunity for us to actually go zero to two. So we start educating them from zero to two. I think this is from, from my industry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Dato, your side, uh, in terms of business model, how will it change uh, after this? Yeah, you're looking at MDEC and looking at the industry that we are taking care of. Maybe for MDEC, from MDEC perspective? Um, I, obviously, as, as a government agency, our yes. job is about facilitating and, and also uh, helping the industry to grow. Internally, yes. MDEC, we are also taking this opportunity to get more people to be familiar with uh, doing or operating side differently. Sure. We, we even before the MCO, we were already trying out some of this uh, tool and I believe we will continue with that. But what we see actually more uh, important is how we can use this uh, quote-unquote opportunity True. to influence uh, more people to use technology to help them with their productivity gain. Uh, you asked about what will change. I believe online will be taking more center stage than before. Yes. I would not say offline will, will be totally eliminated because mm-hmm. it's in the near future, it's not possible, especially when we are allowed to go. Yes. But I uh, like what's, how Samuel put it, right? People start to realize that you can do things very differently. Recently, I was just watching a video called The Big Reset. So The Big Reset means this thing is going to force us to think how we live our life. The reset in terms of even how you operate your business. So this is a whole the society reset that you can think, you can look at it from that angle. Mm. So it's, for business people, it's very important for them to start looking at this and see how this thing will change people's behavior. Let's not talk about grab food, yes. People will still do that, but there are more people be cooking at home. There will be, be less eating out. There'll be more cooking at home, so the consumer will be buying different things. So you need to be prepared. The people who are selling food, maybe they're not selling the cooked food anymore. Maybe the raw material yes. is something 
going to get more attention. So, yes. so all this, and if you look at that, they, that means your logistic also need to need to adapt to this kind of change. Yeah. And I think we know for a, for a fact that the e payment, the mm. cashless, is going to take a bit more, uh, get more traction, which is a good thing because it's something we want to to promote. But in the past, people say I can wait. Now you realize I cannot wait. We we don't hope for any new disaster to come again, but we learn from this experience and we want to be better and use this technology to become better is what we see will happen. We're pushing a lot and I will tell you, we, we are the more fortunate one we know what it is. I will tell you, it's 70, 80% out there do not know. So from MDEC, it's also our responsibility to reach out. And we are changing our, our focus as well. Instead of telling the, the people like Sam to do something I think he can take care of himself we will just make sure that we have enough support but it's like the have not the people who do not know that we have to change our focus and go and help them people have to weather the, the COVID 19's uh, yes. potential recession so yeah. how do we use our vehicle use the technology to help them to survive and hopefully after survival is to grow further to reach yeah. out thank you Adrian you have anything to add on I think um, uh, I would say probably just just what, what from just really looking at what's happening is that the digital digital transformation agenda has been highly accelerated now. Um, even just on a business perspective, uh, we've been getting a lot of requests, uh, a lot of people asking to look at their organization and what they need to to basically look and to, to to deliver and everything. Mm -hmm. So the first part is that the agenda for transformation is very key. This is in terms of way of working. But where I see the biggest opportunity or the things that definitely will change because business have to change. I mean, businesses are meant to change, like the word reimagine. Basically, they have to relook at is that innovation, a lot of new innovation will probably come out from here um, you know, in terms of how people will deliver their services or even deliver their products. Um, and some of them might even do a pivot. I think we see a lot of good, strong organizations today. Uh, when, we talk, when I talk about the, the really good um, large organization in the States was actually came out of the depression uh, where during that time, revolution, right? So industrial revolution is because of pain points, because of the changes, because of needs, they started to innovate. Um, examples like even companies like Lego didn't start off building Lego, um, but because mm -hmm. of really a forced, um, I would say forced innovation, they have to try, they have to change to survive. And eventually they actually become an expert at uh, surviving that they eventually thrive. So I think um, I would see that there will be a lot of changes and uh, there will be a lot of opportunities. Um, some organizations will probably feel, I mean, even like um, when Grab came in and taxis and all that. So there will, there will be a change. Um, it's just not really the, the, the work and service itself, but probably the way they deliver and even the consumption of the way consumers experience the, the products and services now also will start to change. So mm -hmm. I think that's a big opportunity. So SMEs should really start looking at uh, where is my business now and where should my business be and how can I get there? I think if they can look at this now and with MDEC, honestly, um, really good job to MDEC. I mean, I've actually traveled around the region and we have in Malaysia, we are the one of the only countries that have such support. Everybody tells me, well, Adrian, you know, you are the only country that have something like MDEC who support startup, who support SME, who support corporates, who support across because there is a very big digital agenda that MDEC is pushing for and, and really kudos to MDEC for that. So if, if they say they don't have support, um, I think very challenging to say that because in Malaysia, there is just so much. And just even from one organization alone, like MDAC already can cover across the range from your B40s to even your, your SMEs, right? So this is mm -hmm. where I think uh, Malaysia shouldn't take any excuse. We should really start innovating today and take digital transformation um, as really a way to work seriously and then look at reimagining your business. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the endorsement. Coming from a party is easier than for me to, to sell and <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the other thing will be okay. Uh for those entrepreneurs that think my business not doing fantastically well, but I'm surviving, why must I change? So what kind of advice can we actually give to them? Those people that don't see the urgency of it yet. Okay, I think um the first question, you do you just want to survive? Or you want to mm -hmm build a business that matters. I think that's a, that's a really uh, important part. Mm -hmm. 
because the first question that I asked myself as a, as a user, you know, as a, as, a, as a digital tech user, I asked one question, how long can I survive using this this way? And the next question is, is, it, is there going to be any disruptor in my industry? Mm-hmm. So maybe one day, like one disruptor will just come into my industry and disrupt everything. Mm-hmm. But I need to be ahead. That's, just the, that's, the, um, that's the one question that I ask myself to keep me uh, moving forward. So I improve my processes. I make sure that my processes are always at the you know, top-notch level. And I think the, the, the next question is, do you just want to survive? Okay. And, or you want to enjoy high profit margin because you, are, you can charge premium because of the value created through these digital technologies. True. Because you need to create new value to charge premium. True. This is something that I believe in. True. So if you're looking at just surviving, then you don't have to change. But if you wanna, if you wanna disrupt, if you wanna lead, you really need, you really need to innovate. And I think um, there are so many um, technologies out there for you to leverage on. You don't really have to go through one by one. You can just get a consultant to help you to do it, mm-hmm. like Adrian, someone like Adrian to help you. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the third question is, um, I think the third question as a business owner, you need to think of a purpose, because I think it, uh, it is the purpose that drives innovation. If for if you want to be a follower, if you want to be a survivor, you don't have to innovate. But if you want to serve your customers better, if you want to serve the pain point, you want to solve this problem better than anyone else, and even solve problems that haven't existed, I think you really need, you really need digital technology. I agree yeah. with uh, what Samuel said. And also, the, the, if you are surviving, why should I change? You say don't change. But what I want to say is that we use a tagline called disrupt or be disrupted. You may think you'll survive maybe, but just for, for, for temporarily survival, you can't even survive because runway is getting shorter day by day. Hmm, so, so, your, so one day, let's say your, your, like Sam, your melody is going to take over another 100 com- uh, kindergartens business because you can give value and they cannot give value. So they can't survive. Mm-hmm. The only way to push forward is continue to, to, to transform. Your business is key. Look at your, the customer segment. The whole thing is about give them more value and how to reach out to more. If you, unfortunately, this is business, right? People will come to eat your lunch if you do not go out and protect mm-hmm. it. That's number one. Secondly, is any business you want to eat other people's lunch and dinner as well. Correct. So that's one. But obviously, I'm not asking you to go and kill other people. If, let's say, uh, you can you go, you can branch out and create some new value, new businesses, and now way to to look at it. Okay. So yes, you have to change. You mm-hmm. cannot say I can survive by not changing. No such right. thing. We all yeah. have data. We didn't have all the data. Like how the the Fortune 500 company survival rate has gone down from 75 years to 15 years. So not to mention smaller companies. After this such this thing, there are people impacted, there will be a lot of companies will close and we know that also. Okay. So this it's just reality. Yeah. So Adrian, how can we eat their lunch, their dinner and their supper? <laughs> <laughs> I think probably just to add on a bit, this was uh, this is more towards an entrepreneurial in uh, perspective rather than a digital perspective, is that if your business is not thriving, then you should question your business. Um, someone asked, someone told, because I was telling about my, you know, my story about my way, what I was doing and some of the business I was doing. This is a few years back. They asked me this question. If your business is not thriving, what are you doing? So I just stopped to wonder, like, really, if I am not thriving, then what am I doing? Even just building a business to survive. Um, the yeah. guys asked me to just go and work for somebody. <laughs> um, this was an advice from a, a good mentor. Lah. But anyway, coming back to how we, I wouldn't say eat, somebody else's food but probably <laughs> we kind of figure out how we could probably fit in the entire ecosystem <laughs> uh, you know like we say strong will survive and all that but it, in a sense it's an ecosystem right um is that i think uh, i was sharing with a with a, with a group organ- with an organization later i mean earlier is also about startups right because mm-hmm. if you see startups eventually and normally do what we call some part is a pivot um so today i start off as a company a but along the way, I realized my customer is different, change, and, and I have dif- different, different difficulties. Eventually, I become a company B type of uh, product because mm-hmm. I pivoted along the way and survived and thrived and became something great. Um, so that's one is that you want to probably start again. Assess your organization. Um, what are you doing and what's your customer doing? Are you filling that gap? 
Are you having any value? Are you solving any pain points for your customers? If it's not, then take excess of your stock and say, what can you do? So in survival, this is almost like survival. You go to the jungle, you're now stuck there, plane crash or whatever, and then now you don't figure out to survive. You look at the only tools you have left and figure out what you can do. What are your key priorities? Maybe set a fire, set a shelter or something. Then you see what you have first and then you do it. But if you don't have, then go to the secondary part first and then work from there. So this is where I would actually say that um, this is where you would probably want to look at is do you need to do a pivot or do you need to basically do what we call a small um, change of business model? Uh, and I won't say change directly. So I will probably say, you know, like how people do MVPs, uh, minimal viable product, um, who basically say, okay, you know what? I, am, I have um, A, B, C, D, E in my company. I'm going to take A and C and create a new product and see if it works. So if it works and I start to gain revenue from there, I'm then going to start invest more. And eventually my A and C only will be maybe become the bulk of my income. I will shut down A, B, C, D, E. Because A, B, C, D, E takes a lot of my resources. So this is where I think I'll go back to really um, most entrepreneurs are creative. Um, they, they are very able to solve problems. And actually, honestly, Malaysian are uh, one of the best resilient guys. And I've seen so many good startups come from Malaysia. So I would say we are at a good place. So all we need to do is to really, the, the challenge is that we are afraid to move away from our comfort zone. We are very scared to say, oh, you know what? I'm so good at this for the last 30 years. I want to do this thing. It's going to be challenging. So this is where you might, now in this space, we have a reset. Honestly, it's a good time to, it's level playing field for a lot of organizations. You want to try, experiment, roll out little experiments and see if it makes money because it's a survival, all right? And yes. if it really thrives, then invest more in it. So two things. One, create a sub-business or two, probably a pivot. So I think these two key things is an angle where entrepreneurs can consider. Mm -hmm. So for those that have not started on this, uh, have not uh, started on this uh, journey, is it too late for them to adopt now? Uh, Samuel, what do you think? Now all my competitors seems to be doing it already. Is it too late for me to start now? I think you got to do it now if your competitors are doing them. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, really, I think it really depends. But because for now, I think um, this COVID nineteen, um, I think it's about you gotta you gotta trim a little bit, okay? Because if you realize for for many uh, investment, uh, it's about efficiency uh, investment. Actually, if you realize that digital technology is about uh, productivity, it's about efficiency, and it will slowly impact on your revenue. But for now, my advice would be um, trim down, and I think. Um, Invest, uh, invest in um, digital tech that tech that can actually increase your revenue, not you know the, the those kind non-supporting function um, um, digital tools. Uh, that's my mm -hmm. advice. Uh, right. I think it's not too it's not it's not too too late, but you're gonna start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that all. Yeah, I, I think the fact that if they ask a question, is it too late? So I'll take it a bit positive. Yes. It's never it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you you can say it's late because especially like I say, oh Sam is is doing so well and I'm not. So you okay. have to be, but that doesn't stop you from doing something. But of course, at this difficult time, you cannot like put your money and not thinking about the the immediate short term uh, 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 implication. Yeah, implication. So so you still have to 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 look at your financial yes. cash flow key. For, for you to continue to, to, to go to get through this period and later to continue to, to grow your business. So mm -hmm. it's very important. This comes back to business actually. And digital tool is what you are going to use to help you to, to enhance your business. Always think of it that way. Business, mm -hmm. what are you delivering to your customer is something you have to focus on. And then you look at what are the issues that you cannot deliver and how the, the different technology tools that you can use to help you to move forward. So mm -hmm. adopt, you don't ask anymore. If you ask, it's too late and you still ask a question. <laughs> really, really, nobody can save, right? Can save yeah. you anymore. Do something, right. go and right. use, la, you know, what's app for four people and then later move it to <laughs> Zoom, la, team, la, whatever, do that. Okay. And then go out your customer, go online, please. Do something like as soon as you do something like. I would say that okay, adding on is that obviously the, the normal answer would be if you if you haven't started, I mean it's never late, it's better now than never. But I would say that it is if you haven't started, it's also good. 
because now you're taking um okay so please spend time reading and understanding what people are doing because uh, how you hear about Zoom is because a lot of people are using it. This is very good. Artist. So people are writing about it. So now is a good time for me to pick up things because people have done validation for me. Oh, Zoom, uh, I don't need to think so much. I'll just take Zoom. Example, of course, there are some vulnerabilities <laughs> and all that. But I'm just saying that people have done research for you. They say, oh, this is what you can use. I'll take. So which means if I haven't adopted something else, I probably can adopt it now. So there is actually a, a positive side. Uh, what people are now doing, I can take and do because it is, yes, I'm a bit late, but people have done research. So rather than me investing in a, like a big system or something, uh, now straight away, oh, this CRM, this guy used it and everybody says it's very good, I can use it. I don't have to experiment myself. I can now jump straight into it and probably implement it into my organization because someone has already done the research. So mm -hmm. yes, I think now is actually the best time to go into it. Oh, plus the discounts, I, I forgot to say. Now you just <laughs> have um, vouchers, COVID-19, you will get a lot of, a lot of support. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now is the discount time. Uh, COVID-19 sales, is it? Okay. Uh, yeah, Dato, what are some of the MDAC concerns during this uh, COVID-19 period and how MDAC is addressing those concerns? Okay, uh, if you ask me, we, our concern is that are always about this, the, the company's uh, well-being. So, high level, every SME as we is talking about is business continuity, employee well-being. And also, ultimately, it's a macro social economic support that, that we can put in to help. So these are big title, but it's, it, it, it's, it's real. So um, I think what we need is to focus on the SMEs. I think big corporate, uh, they have some contingency plan. They all have this uh, business continuity plan and all those things. Uh, they, they know how to take care of themselves. They are impacted. Everybody is impacted, but they yes. can Yes. But SMEs, they are a large part of it. And we are talking about hundreds of thousands. I'm not talking about, some people say a million. I'll just say 500,000 of them. And how many of them really can survive this is the key thing. So that's why we are doing our part. If, can, if digital technology can help them to, you know, weather through this, that's, that's, that's good. And we are also looking at how to make it easier. Just how you talk about their, like, like COVID-19, you can. So we are very lucky that many of our companies from the industry are practicing this pay forward attitude, especially those who have made it. They mm -hmm. are all coming forward, join force uh, with uh, MDAC. We have something called hashtag digital versus uh, COVID. I, I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard about that. So what happened is that we compiled a list of our service offerings. Some are free, some are dis heavily discounted. So that those uh, companies who need to use this service now is the best best time. You can maybe subscribe to certain services for free for a few more months, test it out, then later you can choose to subscribe to it. And good thing also because of technology now, you don't have to spend a lot of money anymore if you have some some cash to to, to invest. Cloud services, you know, it may, may it cost you a few hundred a year sometimes. But mm -hmm. that is gonna take you a long way. Uh, we continue to, to engage a different uh, service provider, we call them technology uh, service provider, to come forward to be part of this campaign. And now is to call on, yesterday I have a session with all the SSM associations uh, heads for them to reach out to the different verticals so that these people can all come and start using the technology. We hope by doing this, we can save as many businesses as possible. Yes. And then if the businesses are safe, then the employees also are saved. And this will have huge impact to the whole country's economic uh, survival. It's so micro to macro. All these things has, it's, it's a chain effect. If you don't do this, many people are impacted. One off is good, but it's very short term. You need mm -hmm. to also look at medium term. Medium Help term. them survive. Longer term is important. So MDA is doing our part and we continue going out to ask more industry partners to come and help us as well. Perhaps, you know, Adrian can help a bit as well. Yeah, uh, Dato, one more question for you. At this juncture, what kind of uh, supports that uh, MDAC offers to entrepreneurs? I'm interested to know as well. Yeah, monetary, <laughs> if can, if not monetary, what are, what are those supports? Okay, the digital uh, versus COVID was one of the things, uh, it's one of the things we continue to do. Uh, I just want to use this opportunity to, to tell people the other program that we have that actually is already 
uh, existing program, we just maybe we intensify a bit and change a bit on how we uh, deliver those services. Uh, from digital adoption point of view, we have our initiative called 100 Go Digital. Uh, we have our SME digitalization grant. I talked about it just now. Uh, it's something that we, we support uh, the, the two banks to, to go out. Uh, because we know the technology feel a bit more subject matter experts uh, in, in our group. So we, we identify solutions that's good for, for, the, for the SME. I, I share some models like the remote working tools, e-commerce tools, the HR payroll tools and digital marketing tools, all these things uh, made it available and people can start doing it. Mm -hmm. And we have done all the calculation and also have the support from the, from the TSP. The 5,000 run is actually good enough for someone to kickstart. So don't, don't waste opportunity. That one can benefit, let's say, 100,000 SMEs. Yeah. Our, our e-commerce can even ex uh, can, is expanded to all, from social commerce to the, the e-commerce that you understand to e-commerce platform. Plus, we also drive uh, cross-border e-commerce, meaning if you are ready, you can also export. So cutting across, providing training. Training literally is free. La. And then we have also been uh, working with like 2030 uh, partners from the marketplaces for them to onboard. So uh, most of them provide, provide uh, free onboarding. But of course, when you sell, you, you have to pay some commission. I think that's fair. Business is business. Sure. Not ask everything for free, right? Yeah. So, so uh, all the things we do. And if, if, the, if, if the communities needs a training, many uh, free training is, is already available. So these are some things that we do. We are continuing working on some other financial support as well. But important thing to, to, to understand is that it's not the one of money that we are more concerned with. That will give you a grant and then you're happy. But the grant is for you to, to grow your business. The, the grant is not for you to, to just pay for your three months or, or pay OPEX. It cannot be like that because we oh. have to be realistic about it. Understand. understand. A, lot, a lot of programs and we are also talking to other agencies who... We cannot do this alone, so we work with many other agencies, SME Corp, banks, MOF, Bank Nagara, and, mm -hmm. and some... Mida. Mida, yeah. yeah. Everyone. All right, understand. So for all the audience tonight, if you all want to get more information on what are the initiatives, what are the campaign, be it on the, in terms of grant or consultation or courses available, you can always go to MDAC official website. I'm sure from there on, you will have links to other campaign or programs that they have. Uh, yes. Uh, lastly, maybe uh, words of uh, advice or words of wisdom for all our audience tonight uh, on digital transformation and how can it help them to seal through this challenging and difficult time? Uh, maybe uh, Samuel, you want to go first? Okay, I think um, from my experience, going digital, I think it's investment. It's not like census, it's investment. So there's a trade-off you know, between long-term value that you're creating and short-term profit. You, you, basically, you actually you have to sacrifice your profit just to create new value. Uh, because this is investing back to the business. So I think um, we really need to have this kind of mindset, you know, and if you really like the Kiansu type, okay, the Kiansu type, you can maybe look at the cost component first. Okay. That's another way of looking at, look at the cost component and see whether this cost can be replaced or can be reduced by the digital tools mm -hmm. available online. I think uh, that's another part because um, I didn't really get a lot of uh, support from the board previously, like four years back. Yes. And I really have to keep looking at the cost. Like how, how can I reduce the cost? How can I convince the board? <laughs> this is this, this, uh, um, the thing dilemma. that I've been through. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not a dilemma for me, but for, yes. for because they're really too used to the profit. You're mm -hmm. making one million, let's say one million, uh, just every year. And now yeah. you're asking me to sacrifice 200,000 to invest on something that maybe, that uh, maybe like, could not bring any effectiveness. My so, work might not work. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, might not work. Yeah, so these are the things that uh, we look at. Look at the cost components first, and then um, I think if you have, and another thing is to look for the processes that are draining a lot of your time, and you can try to replace them with digital tools. I think that's very okay. important as well, so All that right. you can focus on your core, and maybe you can put a budget aside as well. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe like per year, five percent of your total revenue or total profit, or ten percent of your total profit, 
Mm-hmm. And I think a relationship with the board is very important as well to convince them to, to get on board. So you have to convince the board with numbers. It's very important. I, I think, um, I think, I, I think as a, this is just more of a, uh, more of a like analogy because uh, I, I love yes. climbing mountains and uh, <laughs> done many different types of mountains. But this yeah, is I what saw I the observed. base camp for Everest on <laughs> your t-shirt. Oh, yeah, so I've, 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 here's the observation. I think for any transmission or any digital adoption or acceleration, I think one key thing is will. Um, there must be a will to see it through. So, you know, like um, in any mountain I've seen, right? So you see some guys with really expensive shoes, 12,000 ringgit type shoe, and then he's like going wow. out all fully gear. And then you've got this guy who's like, a, you know, uh, maybe with a normal Adidas Kampong or something, you know, just going out Mount uh-huh. K, right? With basic raincoat and all that. But both of them succeed. Both of them will still head to the summit because, not because of the tools they have, not because of the brands that they carry, but because of the will. So as long as you've got a will to push this through and, you know, like training for mountain, you don't see any benefit until you climb the mountain. You're like thinking, why am I doing down here training and all that? It doesn't show any benefit, but you know, the will will actually see you through in getting your organization from A to B, whether you have the most expensive shoe or you have the most simple shoe, but still you need a shoe lock. So this is where the cost comes in. But ideally, will will be one of the key things that I would say that will determine success of digital uh, transformation or adoption. I understand. Well said, well said. Dato, would you want to wrap it up for us? Just add to what uh, Sam and, uh, and Adrian just said. Mm-hmm. Uh, objective of why you're doing this is important. Mm-hmm. We are talking about you are running your business. Mm-hmm. So uh, you, this is actually a business discussion. The digital is a tool for you to get the objective, what you what you want to achieve, mm-hmm. is your target. Have it very clearly spelled out, and then with the will to carry it through, and then all this uh, wisdom of having the relook at your process, planning for your cash flow. Yes, you need to do all those things in order for you to get to the end goal that you have set out to do. And it's not going to be easy if you want to go there because there will be people, there will be a lot of uh, uh, questions, noises and all. So there is a view, will will come in and build a team around you so you can yes. go further if you have more people supporting you to do that. If you can communicate clearly to people the reason why, get the buy-in and have a team of people to work with you and reach out to people who can give support. Like you say, Adrian, we are lucky in Malaysia that there are many agencies who are out there who want to help you. Mm-hmm. And you need to communicate to people clearly why you are doing this. You, your, your objective must be right. With that, and then always take the opportunity to learn the different new tools. Transformation is a, is, is a journey, I would say, because there will be new things coming up, new ideas, new, new technology. So how we use it. Is, the question is not about how do I use technology. The, or, or, the question is always about how am I using technology to, to achieve my business goal, my business objective. You are very clear why you are doing this. Then you work backward on how to get it done. If you're not clear, you can't do it. Yes. Yeah. Mm. As- Yes, thank you very much, all our panelists. And this discussion has been very fruitful. Uh, and uh, of course, we have to really reimagining digital transformation because uh, we got to really know our why and uh, the will to see it through. But most importantly, is like what Dato is saying, runway is getting shorter by the days. So seize the opportunity and uh, it's never too late as what Adrian says. And we, we should also take an example of what uh, successfully Samuel has transformed digitally. And this actually can build a lot of confidence among all our entrepreneurs' friends out there. So seize the opportunity uh, and uh, wishing all of you all the best. Thank you very much, all the panelists. Thanks. Really appreciate all your Thank inputs you all. and insights. Okay, and may, may every one of us SME entrepreneurs uh, stay strong and uh, do not give up. We shall, we shall sail through these challenges together. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.